Hey Dragonflies, Mr. Madsen here with Kelso, and we're going to talk about what Kelso does and how he helps us solve problems. So, those of you who know who Kelso is, you know that Kelso created this wheel, and this wheel is nine ways to solve small problems. Not big problems, but small problems. So repeat after me. Go to another game. Talk it out. Share and take turns. Ignore it. Walk away. Tell them to stop. Apologize. Make a deal. And wait and cool off. These are nine ways that Kelso has developed to help us solve small problems. Okay. So this is what the real poster looks like. If you remember from last year when you were in school, it's Kelso's um, pond that he lives in, and then he's got his wheel in the middle, okay? And again, there are two types of problems. Take your thumb and your first finger and put them almost together, not quite touching. This is what we do when we reference a small problem. Everybody do this. Nice job. Okay, so small problems, Kelso says, we're smart enough and we're strong enough to solve on our own. The other kind of problems there are, are big problems. And big problems are big. They're scary and they're dangerous. And we always have to get help from an adult that we trust, always. There's no in-between problems. There's no kind of small and kind of big. They're either small or they're big, okay? Now, what's the difference between a small and a big problem? All right, so again, small problems are problems that we are strong enough and smart enough to solve on our own. Okay, these are problems that, that we know we can handle, okay? Big problems though, big problems are scary and they're dangerous and we have to get help from an adult that we trust. <clears throat> let's look at some small problems. So let's say you're at home and you're trying to do some work and maybe you have a brother or a sister or mom or dad, and they're just tapping their pencil, they're tapping their pencil on something and they're doing it and it's making noises. And it's annoying, but is it scary? No. Is it dangerous? No. That means that it's annoying and it's a small problem. And there's lots of ways that we can try to solve that problem by using Kelso's choices. We could ask them to stop. We could ignore them. We could maybe go, instead of go to another game, go to another room. There are lots of ways that we can solve that problem. Another small problem is somebody, when you're playing a game, and they don't go out when, they're at, when they lose their turn. Is that scary? No. Is it dangerous? No. It's just annoying. You'll find that small problems are really annoying problems, but they're not scary and they're not dangerous. And so we would just use Kelso's choices. Maybe we'd choose to play a different game, okay? Another one, someone saving a swing or a spot in line. Now this is one that would happen at school. If we were back at school on the playground and you go out to recess and you wanna be on a swing, and somebody's saying, nope, I'm saving it for my best friend. Is that a scary problem? No. Is it dangerous? No. Yeah, it's annoying, okay? And so we would use Kelso's choices just try to solve that, okay? Same thing with a spot in line. When we go to different areas in the school, we always line up to go. Same thing can happen. It's not scary or dangerous. Another one for a line, someone taking cuts, someone stepping in front of you. That hurts our feelings, makes us feel bad, but is it scary? No. Is it dangerous? No. Someone taking too long at the drinking fountain 
or taking too long at whatever it might be and you want to be the next person yeah again it's not scary not dangerous another one someone not sharing or someone calling you a name now this one this one someone calling you a name feels like a big problem it feels big okay but that's just our feelings if somebody calls you a name it's not scary and it's not dangerous it's just a name we can choose to ignore them we can ask them to stop we can walk away there's lots of choices that we can do okay it, I'm not saying it's okay for someone to call you a name, but I'm saying that we can handle ourselves and we can take care of that problem. And the last one, someone not playing fair. When we kind of talked about that with losing their turn at a game. Again, it's annoying, but it's not scary. It's not dangerous. <clears throat> Next, big problems. Let's look at some examples of some big problems. Remember, these are problems that are scary and dangerous. Playing with matches. Pretty obvious, right? Playing with fire, it's not safe. Yeah, it's scary and it's dangerous. Doesn't matter where you are. Fire is dangerous. And we had that this, this fall, right when school started with the smoke. Yeah, it was really bad because of fires, wildfires. So matches and playing with fire, that's a scary problem and it's a big problem. <clears throat> stealing from the teacher's desk. Now, this could be stealing from anyone. It doesn't have to be the teacher's desk. Stealing is a big problem. Yeah. Bullies. Bullies can be a big problem. A bully is someone that is usually bigger than you and they do something hurtful all the time or not all the time but maybe they do it a lot okay and so we're going to talk more about bullies down the road but bullies can be a big problem and bullies will often they'll do this and they'll say if you tell you'll be sorry and when they do this they're they're meaning that they're going to punch you don't believe them okay bullies are a big problem and with big problems, we get help from trusted adults, okay? So don't believe the bully that, that they're going to hurt your pet or, or someone you care about, okay? Always get help with bullies, always. Weapons. I have here weapons at school because usually we talk about things at school. But weapons are dangerous. Weapons are scary, yeah. We have to be really safe. Now, some of you have families that like to hunt and they like to, to um, feed their family that way. And that is perfectly okay because it's usually one of your parents that does that and they've been trained to be safe with those guns, okay? But weapons in general are scary and they're dangerous. And we gotta be really careful and get help. Fighting punching, kicking, hitting. Again, those are scary and dangerous things, right? Anytime we use our hands or our feet to try to solve a problem, it's a big problem, okay? Climbing over the fence to get a ball. So here's an example. This is an example more again for school, okay? And it's an example that happens on the playground. And those of you that know about our playground know that sometimes a ball goes over the fence. Well, we've got a couple of fences, okay? We've got two that go out to roads. So that, you can understand why that's not safe, okay? If you chase a ball out into the road, there's cars out in the road and that's dangerous and scary. There's another fence that the ball could go over and it goes into this like swampy area. And it's really steep and slippery. And again, it's scary and dangerous. So. If a ball goes over the fence, it's a big problem. And it's not our job to climb over that fence and get the ball, even if we think we can do it safely, okay? It's something that we always get adults to help us with. All right, so here's the thing, okay? Whenever we face any problem, we have feelings. And you guys know about your feelings. We've talked about them before. And so I'm gonna show a couple of pictures here 
And I want you to think about what feeling this might be and guess before I show, okay? So here's the first one. And some of them are really easy. If you guessed happy, you were correct. Yeah, she's smiling. She's looking out. She's happy. Yeah. When you have a problem, do you usually feel happy? No, that's not a feeling we have when we have a problem. Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. Think about how he looks. Look at his face. Look at his eyes. If you said sad, you're absolutely right. He is sad. He's looking down and he's got a frown. Right. Sometimes if you have a problem, do you feel sad? Yes. Yeah, this is yes by sign language. And so yes, we can feel sad when we have a problem. This is no actually in sign language. Okay, so yes and no. Okay, let's go to the next one. This one and this one. What do you think? That's right. If you guessed angry or mad or frustrated, you are totally right. Yeah. If you have a problem, can you feel mad? Yes, you can. Okay. If you look at the boy on the left, it looks like he's out on the playground. He's making fists with his hands. His face is all scrunched up into a grumpy face. His shirt's untucked. It looks like something happened maybe in a football game or a soccer game or kickball. And he's not happy. In fact, he looks really mad. Not just mad, but really mad, okay? If you look at the picture on the right, his hands, one hand has a fist, the other hand is holding something. And there's a clue to what he's holding. If you look at the bottom of the picture, it's part of a tractor. Here's the story with him. He let his little brother play with his tractor in their sandbox. His little brother played with it and broke it. And instead of telling his older brother that he broke it, he just buried it in the sand. Was that a good choice? No, because big brother came and started to play in the sandbox and found his tractor broken. And so he is really mad as well, okay? That his little brother broke his tractor. Let's look at this next one. This is Andy. How do you think he's feeling? If you said scared, you are absolutely right. Yeah, he is afraid. And you can kind of see in the picture, there's little water droplets on the window. What do you think he's afraid of? Yeah, it's a big storm, thunder and lightning. So he's afraid of the thunder and lightning. How about this picture? Her mouth is open, her eyes are wide. You thought surprised, you're exactly right. Yeah, she's surprised. She can't get believe that she got this gift and she is super, super excited. This last one. So this last one's a little hard to see, but she's on the playground and there's something on her shoe. Yeah, this is disgusted, yeah. She was walking out to the playground and she stepped and where someone had spit their gum out and it stuck to her shoe. Now she's using her hand to pull the gum off and it's disgusting. And she's kind of making a Mr. Yuck face like, oh, this is disgusting. All right. So when we have problems, we have, a, we have feelings. They could be sad feelings, mad feelings, scared feelings, they could even be disgusted feelings. And the important thing when we have feelings is that we need to calm those feelings down in order to make a choice for with Kelso's wheel, okay? And think about which choice we wanna to use to solve this problem. So one of the best ways to calm down, and I know that you've been practicing this in your class, is to do deep breathing. And one thing that I like to do is pretend that I see a dandelion. That's what this picture is. It's a dandelion. And you can picture yourself 
You wouldn't smell the dandelion, but that's another example. Smell the flower. So breathe in through your nose and then blow out through your mouth. What I like to do with the dandelion when I'm especially feeling really mad is I like to breathe in through my nose, take a big deep breath, and then pretend I have that dandelion and blow. And as I blow and I watch the seeds blow away, I can let my anger go too, okay? You might have to do that a couple of times to get your anger to calm your, to leave so that you can be calm and make a good choice. Here's another idea. So smell the flower, breathe in through your nose, hold for three seconds, and then blow out like you're gonna blow on a pinwheel and make the pinwheel spin. Another great way to do deep breathing to help when you're feeling a feeling about a problem. And once you solve that feeling, then you'll be able to make a choice about Kelso's wheel and the choice. Okay, dragonflies, now Kelso wants you to watch his first movie. Some problems are small. It's, it's mine! No, it's mine! It's mine! Some problems are big. Listen, if you tell anyone what happened, they're gonna be sorry. Hi, I'm Kelso, and I'm here to talk about problems. Small problems and big problems. What's the difference between a small problem and a big problem? Well, small problems are problems that you're smart enough and strong enough to take care of yourself. Like Kevin and Andrew arguing about whose ball that is. They were able to handle that pretty quick. Hey, I got an idea. I play with it now, and then you can play with it after. Okay. We call that share and take turns. But big problems, well, big problems can be scary and dangerous. To solve big problems, you need a grown-up. In this program, we're going to find out more about small problems and big problems and how to solve them. So, let's get started! Emma, Tanika, and the rest of their class were in the library. They were supposed to be reading. Tanika was... But Emma... Emma was annoying Tanika and making it hard for her to read. Tanika wanted Emma to stop. At first, Tanika told Emma to shush. But that didn't stop her. Tanika knew she was smart enough to handle this. The way she did it was to ignore Emma. She didn't look at Emma and she tried not to listen. She acted like the noise didn't bother her at all. And pretty soon, Emma stopped. It worked! Then Emma sat next to Andrew. And pretty soon, she was doing annoying things again. Snapping her fingers and tapping the table. Andrew started to get mad, but he knew that he could handle this. What could he do? Well, he could have ignored her like Tanika did, but Andrew decided to try something else. He asked Emma to stop. Would you please stop? I'm trying to read a book. Andrew asked Emma nicely. He didn't yell and he didn't shout. He looked her right in the eye and in a firm but friendly voice he said, Please stop. And you know what? Emma got the message and stopped making noises. So you can see that when you have a problem, there could be a few ways to handle it. Tanika ignored Emma. 
Andrew asked her to stop. Their small problem was solved. Okay, so in that video, we saw where two choices were used. One, Emily was, Emma was making noises. She was doing an annoying thing. She was being really noisy and, and distracting. Tamika chose to ignore Emma. And the way that Tamika did that, she didn't look at her and she didn't talk to her. She completely pretended that she wasn't there. Ignoring is probably the hardest choice that Kelso asks us to do, but it works. If you do it really well, it will work. And it worked on Emma. So then Emma moved over to Andrew's table and Andrew, he got mad. Did you see his face? He looked at her and he was super mad. But when he talked to Emma and asked her to stop, he didn't have a mad voice. He had a calm voice and, a, and a, a soft voice, okay? So in order to, again, calm ourselves down, we have to do that deep breathing to calm ourselves down so we don't sound angry. Because if the person that's doing the annoying behavior knows that we're mad and they know that they can bug us, they're going to keep doing it. So that's why you have to be able to calm yourself and ask them nicely, hey, would you please stop? I'm trying to read my book. And then that's what Emma, that's what Andrew did. And that's how Emma ended up stopping. All right, Dragonfly, try these two choices. If you have a problem that's annoying, a small problem, again, not a big problem. Remember, big problems, we need to get adults to help us. Oh, all right. Looking at Kelso's wheel, after you solve that feeling that's that whatever feeling it might be, scared, mad, upset, um, disgusted, one of those feelings, then you can choose one of Kelso's choices to try to solve your problem. Kelso says try two choices, and if you've tried two choices and it still doesn't work, then it's okay to go to an adult and ask for help. The adult might give you some more choices to try, or they might say, yeah, this is a big problem and let me help you with it, okay? All right, dragonflies, I will see you later, and Kelso says, so long.